people always ask me, you know, with the new C8 Corvette, you know, hey, how do you like that car? You know, I really like that car. And you, know, you give an explanation, this and that. Well, I've owned Corvettes for over 50 years. This is my 20th Corvette. And so I thought maybe I should do a, a video and tell people about this car and, and what I like and don't like about it. And uh, so let's do that. Let's go and tell you what I like and don't like about the car. These likes and dislikes are in no particular order. The first one I want to start out with is the little guy from across the street. He's, uh, I think he just turned six years old and he's a Corvette fanatic. He loves Corvettes and so I'm going to have him over here to do something very, and you'll get a kick out of this. Watch this. <laughs> This is probably the cutest part of the whole video. Uh, this this little guy is quite a character. So let's let's shoot the. And this one is a like, by the way. This is going to be a like. I hear it inside. Yeah. All right, I got my buddy Easton over here today, and he's going to start the car when I tell him. And uh, I want you to hear the exhaust and see what the exhaust sounds like, and why you don't have to spend four thousand dollars for an aftermarket exhaust. So, Easton, good buddy, you start the car for us. One of the problems that I found with the Corvette were these vents right here. See them? See the vents? Three more vents over here. I'll show them to you. Here they are right there. See all the holes? They go right into the engine compartment. So what happens when you wash the car? The water goes all in the engine compartment. But wait, there's more. This little guy right here. It's all the lead heat out. I get it. The design is nice in the car. I get that part. So then the water can go in this way too. So there's another way to get the water in, in the dog on engine compartment. So what do you do? Well, one of the things I tried is I take painter's tape and I, I tape up all those uh, sections. And then I take uh, some paper towels and put them in here. I try that if I'm washing the car by hand out here. Now, if I go to the car wash where they have the jet spray and you know the thing you spray, um, what I do is on the last, the final rinse, they have that spotless rinse, and I use a spotless rinse. I'm at the couch today, and I thought I'd show you. Number 10, right here, spot-free rinse. That's the baby you want. When you put this on, and you wash the car off, it's spot-free. You don't have to worry about any uh, water spots on your car. Pretty cool. That's why I like this car wash. So we're trying to show you today how to flip the throttle in an automatic transmission. It usually means shifting back into neutral. Well, we can't shift it, shift back into neutral here. But Chevrolet has devised another way. You can pull the two paddle shifters, one on the left and one on the right, both back to you. And watch what happens when I do that. Everything disappears on the display where it says drive and forward. Now it just went back on. So you know you're in the spot where you can rev, rev the uh, car. Like if I pull this in like this, I can rev the car. So let's say you're going by somebody, you're driving up here and 
you can see somebody down here that you know that you want to kid around with a little bit and uh, you pull the two paddle shifters in rivet it's as simple as that not bad huh and the other thing when you're pulling the two paddle shifters and watch again everything disappears in the center you can see just a grayish a grayed out D for drive which means it tells you when you pull these two let me do it again well when I pull these two paddle shifters in you know you're in blip mode I call it <laughs> I'm sure there's a few other words for it but you know you can you can name it anything you want but by golly it works it's pretty clever and thank you GM for putting this little item in here it uh, it works great A couple of things we want to show you today. First of all is the uh, paddle shift. And if you want to shift up, you hit the right one with the plus sign on it. You want to shift down, it puts you in fourth gear, as you can see. And uh, if you hit, tap it twice, I think if you tap it twice, let me see, twice. Puts me down on the lowest gear, which is third gear. It's kind of cool. Pretty nice. Other thing you can do is uh, if you want to go to paddle shift, just hit the manual button. And now you're in manual mode. You notice that the number, the, the gear shift number is in the center. And on the left hand side, you see a small M that tells you you're in the manual mode. You want to go back to drive? Just pull up the drive. Now you're back in drive. And you see the big D, and you, the, sh the gear that you're in is to the right in small letters, number five. So there you go. That looks pretty good, huh? Now, uh, we'll do it. I thought I'd do a little acceleration this morning. It's kind of quiet out here. And maybe from about 30 miles an hour up, let's try 30 miles an hour up. Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> Woo That's rocking and a rolling. Rocking and a rolling. Yep, yeah, for sure. Very quick car, runs good, runs very, very good. A couple of things I really like about the car that I haven't mentioned are the rear view mirror which is absolutely phenomenal. And I also like, I'm gonna put it in reverse, I also like the display looking out the rear. This is really, really nice. And of course, the display here on the dash is really phenomenal. Uh, but I gotta be honest, I'm not that crazy about the steering wheel. It's kind of, I'm getting used to it. Let me put it that way. Um, it's not as rectangular as I thought it was going to be. Uh, maybe it's the, I'm used to a leather steering wheel and I got this special steering wheel with a different fabric on it. And I, my, my, my uh, hands don't feel as gripped on the uh, steering wheel as it should be. So I like the dash. I like, oh, and the other thing that's kind of interesting. The rear view mirror has its own camera on the top of the roof and the camera here for the backup uh, is a special one that's just above the license plate and then uh, let me go back to uh, drive and you can see the front camera this is out the front this is out the front of the car and his this is uh, a, a little further back and you can change uh, different views, both front and back, you can see down the line. So here's the camera for the rear view mirror. Right there. And if you look from the back of the car, you can see that. And here is the camera 
for the backup. And you can see that right there. That's the backup camera right there. So two different cameras. And it also has the side sensors. And the side sensors will let you know if somebody's coming, let's say from that, you're back, let's say you're backing out here. So somebody coming from that direction over there, it'll beep. Or if somebody's coming from this direction over here and driving this way, uh, it'll beep and let you know that uh, there's something approaching. Especially up here, I have a little bit of a curve and sometimes people go a little too fast around the curve and at least I know they're coming. But I think one of the most significant, most important changes in the new C8 Corvette is the DCT or the dual clutch transmission. That is huge. And the dual clutch transmission uh, was a design that was especially, especially made for the Corvette. Uh, the stuff off the shelf wouldn't work in this car because there's too much torque going on here. So they had to design their own uh, dual clutch transmission. And this one works great. Shifts happen in 100 milliseconds. Holy crap. <laughs> Not only that, it can obviously shift faster than any human being. Um, you can read up about dual clutch transmissions and how the, the, if you go on from third to fourth, uh, both gears are already spinning. And so it's easy to go from one to the other. There's actually, you, 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 I don't know if you think you can even measure the torque loss going from one gear to the next gear, but you sure can measure it on a standard transmission. So people say, oh, you know, the purist, uh, I want a manual transmission. You know something? I do not want a manual transmission. I've driven them all my life. This thing kicks, but I want to go fast. This helps me go fast and the guys with the manual transmissions are going to be sitting back at the stoplight <laughs> so there you have it the dual clutch transmission thank you Tej. thank you gm design team it makes a huge difference in this car and it makes that's why that's one of the major reasons why this car is so quick from zero to 60. one of the nice options on the z51 performance package is the electronic limited slip differential, the ELSD. And uh, I always tell people if they ask me, gee, should I get the Z51? Yes, you should, especially if you're gonna do any kind of performance driving with the car. You want this amazing electronic limited slip differential. What it is basically is it's like a clutch between the two wheels and it's able to divvy out the torque uh, in such a way that the car runs uh, really, really well. It was previously in the set seventh generation C7 Corvettes, and they've upgraded it now so that the, they not only does it uh, help you in handling and performance, but um, it also looks at the tire temperatures. Like if it's a real, real cold day, a real, real hot day, it little adjust the clutch performance on the rear end. And I... People ask me, you know, about driving this car and what's one of the things that, you know, on a feedback th kind of thing, what's one of the things I noticed the most about this? And that is that the car is planted. If you saw previously when we went from, uh, what, 28 to 95, that car is so planted when you get on it. You know, and in a C7 Z06, the car would like to fishtail all over the place. But this, this car here is so planted and I think there's a couple of things that have to do with it, and one I think is the electronic limited slip differential. So if you're kind of on the fence on whether they get the Z51 or not, get the Z51, especially if you're going to go a little bit over the speed limit once in a while. You want this uh, limited slip differential. It's, it's really a bargain. Okay, some final thoughts about the C8 Corvette. Uh, I've looked and showed you about everything there was to see about the car. And uh, so a uh, couple of things. I probably wouldn't get the front lift again. Uh, the front lift is just okay. It's not great. Um, paint. I love the paint. Paint came out great. 
some guys, <laughs> some guys, <coughs> they don't like the paint. There's some orange peel or there's something in the paint they don't like, and they spend anywhere from three to four thousand dollars for paint correction. Can you imagine that? Spending all that money on paint correction? We had fun doing this. Uh, my little buddy Easton was over here and started the car. I thought that I thought that was so much fun, and he just absolutely loves Corvettes. He gets all excited every time I back out of the driveway. I get a wave, wave from him. He's a, he's a good kid. He's going to be a really smart kid, too. He's, he's, uh, he's got a lot, a lot of potential. One of the things they do uh, a couple of months after you own the car, I've owned this car for about six months, uh, they send you this little beauty. It's a model of your car. Not exactly, but... Um, it looks like your car. It's very nicely done. It's very heavy. And on it, it has your VIN number. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, make a comment down below. If you don't want to comment, don't. But if you want to make a comment, maybe you own a C8 and there's some things you don't like about it, post it down below. Let's carry, carry on a conversation about this car. I love it. Things you don't like. How about things you do like? How about if you put something you don't like, you have to put something you do like. Or if you own a C8 Corvette, let us know that too. So it's coming from a bona fide owner of the car. But even people that don't own the car, tell us what you like and don't like about the car. I mean, for this kind of money, you're basically owning a real supercar. I mean, this car is nothing short of a supercar. It really is for the money and everything else. And this is a hell of a deal. So think about that and... Uh, like I say, like and subscribe. If you subscribe, that really helps. And uh, make a comment if you want to. We'd love to hear your comments. And uh, the next video will be about launch control. And we're going to show you how to use launch control. It's pretty much similar to the C7 Corvette. We're going to show you how to do it. I did one on the C7 Z06. And uh, I'm going to do one on this. Uh, that's, like I say, that's the next video coming up. And... Uh, we're going to see if we can beat the 0 to 60. Can we beat 3 seconds? Can I get 2.9, 2.8? I don't know. I haven't done it. We're going to do it together. So you're going to see, you know, what the heck happens. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you again real soon.